Good morning, Wakak, and I am pleased to be here to be able to speak to you today. And it is a really, really interesting time to be able to talk about something that is quite interesting and something that is a challenge for each and every one of us. So if we can just close our eyes and pray, and then I'll do the reading. Father God, I just ask that you be ever present as I'm about to tell them about my journey. And Lord, I just ask that you would 
close their visual eyes, but open the eyes of their heart, open the ears of their heart and open their hearts in entirety, Lord, that you might speak to them, that those that identify, and Lord, that it's all okay, that you are staying strong to your promise. In Jesus' name, amen. So, um, what I want to talk about is patience is love. It was alien to me, but if we actually go to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, and I'm going to read from the NIV. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. In context, to live as a Christian and to be able to discern between right and wrong, between what is true and what is false. And if you see me looking down, I'm reading my notes. So the danger of receiving false information exists even in the church. And that's why the message of 2 Peter is so critical today. Peter alerts the readers to the dangers of wrong teachings and shows how to stay true to the word of God. Patience. What is it? It's a now. The capacity to accept or tolerate delay. Problems or suffering without becoming annoyed or anxious. An example, you can find bargains if you have the patience to sift through the rubbish. There was also a question for me in terms of what was patience, and I looked for similar words that could help me understand this a little bit better. So John Mark Bull put up a slide, but some of the words that I found that were similar and I understood was forbearance, tolerance, restraint, self-restraint, resignation, stoicism, fortitude, sufferance, endurance, calmness, composure, even-tempered, equilibrium understanding, indulgence, lenience, kindness, consideration, perseverance, persistence, tenacity, diligence, application, staying power, determination, and my favourite, resolve. I told John Mark that I was going to speak about my favourite verse the one that taught me about God's love through patience. Little did I know how far reaching this would be for me to convey to you what this would be like. Things have become a little raw, but you see, I'm happy to tell you. Have you ever seen the movie Sliding Doors? Gwyneth Paltrow? If not, that's okay. It's about a lady who has two realities, defeated and triumphant, played out by how she responds to her emotions in response to life. I was pretty much the first lady. In reality, I had had knowledge but I had seriously unfettered emotions, actively in a constant fright flight mode. It's not a great way to live, but it was all I knew. I could be here in front of you, but you wouldn't really know me. I was like Eleanor Rigby keeping a face in a jar by the door, references the Beatles. And no, I'm not that old, but I do like their music. I would project 
who I wanted you to see. You see, this right here before your eyes is my alternate reality. I have a relationship with Jesus and we are working on things. I'm always working through something that will improve my relationship with God. So imagine that this one phase of my life in Christ is I know God is all powerful. God is everywhere and in everything and in you. My favorite verse in the Bible, and there are many, but one stands out above others for a long time. I held a misguided image of what love is. It is conditional, fickle. It was transient. It was human and imperfect. Life experience can teach you some hard lessons. And this outlook of what love was had some heavy impacts in life for me, but we don't need to go into them, but just to know, just to acknowledge that life wasn't easy. I saw God in the words speaking just to me and only me right there in that moment in these words, instead he is patient with you. It was so gentle and kind and personal and inspirational. It was beautiful. And it was just for me because it was a journey with the result at the end that was wonderful. I have been searching to see how I could experience the love of God to comprehend it, but I found it to be too enormous, too much to bear. You see, there, there is God. And he is mighty. And this is my head knowledge, yeah? And we are sinners and wretched and unworthy to gather up the crumbs from beneath his table. I spent a lot of time overwhelmed with the love of God. It was too powerful for such a weak person. You see, I didn't understand I didn't understand it. And I couldn't reconcile the length, the depth, the width, nor the height of the love of God. And it was too vast for me to comprehend. I was frightened that the love of God, being so awesome, it would consume me. And I wouldn't know myself. I was still holding on to the image of God holding a thunderbolt. And if I did something wrong, that he could just turn around like anyone else and smite me. me. <laughs> I knew the Bible said that love is this and that, and it still had human value on it. And I didn't find peace in it. My reasoning didn't see past the human experience to see God's love. I had had knowledge. And I can quote verses about love. I was missing the link. So here I am sitting in church, reading through the Bible. And it was when I went on to read in the New Testament, and sometimes I would follow the sermon and sometimes the reading would lead me into other areas of the Bible. And it was on a Sunday, and there I am reading, and it is in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, that I saw the love of God in the verse. It was timely. It was perfect. It was so amazing. I was looking for the one thing that meant to me what love is. But I didn't know it. And I couldn't recognize it. 
But when I read that God is patient, I cried tears of joy. That is love. Any time in my life that I knew someone loved me, patience was always there. And I knew that that was true. The link was the patience of God's love for us is that we all come to the knowledge of him. He waited for me to learn. Looking back now, as I have and to see who loved me in the way that God said he loved me, I saw my grandfather, my dad's dad. He loved his family so much. He sacrificed so much, but he loved more. Pardon me. Many of you may know or not, I have a learning difficulty. So learning has been hard and slow. And I always thought that there was something wrong with me. But you see, reading, which is hard, and this verse was God's way of speaking to me and telling me it's okay. He's keeping his promise to love me. And through this, he is patient. Being a Christian isn't easy and God never said it would be. I have been able to see the patience that I attribute to God and my dad and my grandfather for the years of tirelessness and bearing the load of family, illness and life. I drew strength from Moses and is waiting 40 years patient. There was grief and all sorts of problems going on in the tribes of Israel. And Moses just waited on the Lord. Moses persevered. This has given me a willingness to do the same for my parents. God said, love them. I had no idea what that meant. How was that going to look like? How was I going to achieve it? So here we are, four years down the track, and I'm looking after my mum and dad in their old age. And although it's not been easy, and my mum is going into aged care, what I think I have struggled with is repeating myself to mum over and over. And I'm trusting God to do what is right and good, necessary to meet the care needs of mum. Still to this day, I'm hearing my dad say, one day at a time, Chris, that's all we can do. Patience of God shining through. Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, was righteous but childless. But she didn't lose hope and she was permitted a child. Her husband nothing mean to the man, but her husband struck down because he had lacked the faith until the baby was born. He didn't speak. I saw the patience of Elizabeth enduring through all the ups and downs and she was blessed to meet her cousin Mary, the mother of Jesus, and she met her Messiah. Her patience was rewarded. I like Joseph's Technicolor dream code. I've grown excessively fond of this story, Joseph and how God loved him. And taught Joseph patience through all the tragic life situations. He was placed into sibling rivalry, human trafficking, abandonment, betrayal, bankruptcy, having to start life again. And it, in all of this, he, Joseph, didn't lose hope. 
or sight of God. He is patient. God's love for me was made perfect in how I read 2 Peter 3 verse 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise that he would love me. As some would understand slow. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. This is love. I know that no matter how slow I grow, my God loves me as he is patient with me. And although I might fight him on every corner and in the efforts of surrendering onto his will for my life, this has given me a willingness to do the same for my parents. God said love them. I had no idea what this meant. Today, Monday the 14th, and mum is being moved into residential care. This, as most of you have been know, has been a long road to this point and it's not been easy. Truly, it's so sad, but it's for the best and for the right purpose. COVID-19, we all have been impacted by it. I never knew that it would be linked, it would be linked to be in aged care from the place of home. But to see how God has sustained us how God has permitted things to happen for the good of us. Again, it's been a true view of the love of God. His patience with us is incredible. I'm not perfect and I have flaws. And some are very visible and some are not, but I am learning. And it's one thing to know logic, but it's entirely another thing to experience it. If there's anything that I want you to take away from what I've talked about is that God made a promise. He never breaks a promise. And God is love. And by God's love and by God's patience, I saw and experienced his love. God is patiently waiting for you. And if you haven't met him yet, he is waiting for you. And if you want to talk to somebody about meeting him, there's Pastor John Mark. And there's any number of people within the parish that you can speak to that will be willing to help you on a journey with Christ. And I hope that you can too.
Welcome to our short message series on Engage the Heart of the Alliance. Missions to unreached people, as Simpson's primary focus, produced unity among mission-minded people, which was his secondary primary focus. From there, from the call, from the purpose, from the mission, Simpson formed a movement. Simpson criticized the self-serving local churches of his day for producing within themselves entrenchment, indecisiveness, and resistance to innovation. He envisioned a movement that would be able to focus on the task of missions above the local entanglements of self-serving people. Simpson believed that each believer who embraced Jesus Christ as Saviour, Sanctifier, Healer and Coming King brought to the table a unique toolbox full of unique tools to reach out to unique unreached peoples. Simpson knew that those who continued to look inward at themselves and judge others outwardly were cutting off their own feet, the vehicle by which the Word of God says, beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Self-centeredness not only prevented innovation, it actually fights against it. For Simpson, being on a heaven-sent mission from God to reach the very least reached meant in order to do this, in order to reach every combination of language and religion and culture and ideology and philosophy, it was going to require multiple boxes filled with multiple tools that could be used in the specific context where God has placed them and where He would require them. Simpson knew that there is no one-size-fits-all approach in reaching lost people. Simpson knew that every individual believer's toolbox was too small to fit the needs of every lost person. He knew that every person with a toolbox requires numerous others alongside, and that no single person nor local church could provide what is needed. And so, Simpson, upon the primary focus of missions and unity, stamped his third primary focus, which is innovation. That's next time. Reflect on this. How do you see the unity of the church? And how could you engage in unity on mission? What's in your unique toolbox that you could use alongside others to be on mission together? See you soon as we get to know our Alliance purpose and mission.
invite the people of Australia and other Indigenous elders to join with us. It's a National Solemn Assembly, September 26 and 27. As we seek God's face, according to 2 Chronicles 7.14, for the healing of the land. The scripture says in Acts 3.19, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. That times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord that Peter the Apostle is talking about. There's an outpouring of the Holy Spirit as we read about in Acts chapter 2. We are praying that Australia will get a revelation of God's love through Jesus Christ. We encourage you to pray together on those days in your churches. In your homes and on the hills and on Zoom as we lift up our nation before the Lord. For more details, check out the National Day of Prayer website.
So much has changed in our world lately. Pero la asombrosa gracia y amor de Jesús es más fuerte que la vida y la muerte. Wo auch immer du bist, ruf seinen Namen an. Jesus. 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 Jesus.